Bloodset Implosion, fifth in the Angel of Death series, is now available. Order your copy from StevieJoeAuthor.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Composition of Imagination. I am your host and author, Stevie Joe, and these are my two amazing book guardians, Superman and Moosey. <laughs> and you are in for a real treat. This is the last episode of this segment of Murmurs of Murr County. This is where we take the Angel of Death book series and we dissect the characters and their character development throughout each book and we are finally reaching the end of Elias's series and, and boy we have really dug deep yes, on that yes we have go back and watch those videos because let me tell you I think y'all would agree his development from one to four is massive oh yeah and he's got so much of a change and the good news is he's only gonna keep growing from yes. here so this is the last one in the last video we talked about that pivotal just heart gut-wrenching moment when mm. he saw that Ezra had fed off of sky and now amongst we, other things amongst other things and now Ezra is at the door and redemption has never felt so strange. <laughs> so, so and it is very satisfying so we are in chapter 34 Lilith opens the door to Elias's house. Of course, she's living with him. He, she opens the door, and Ezra is there with that big old five carat diamond, proposing to her. Before she can accept the ring, Elias barrels in, moves her to a safe place, and then instantly just decks Ezra right in the face. He knocks out one of Ezra's fangs and crushes it on the ground. So Ezra is now down to one fang, by the way. And Ezra's diamond goes flying across the room onto the floor. Elias grabs Ezra, brings him into the house, chucks him onto the coffee table shattering it completely pieces of the coffee table are stabbing into Ezra from the back Elias takes a very heavy shelf slams it on top of Ezra so he's pinned between this nice. shelf and this table stands on top of the shelf over Ezra for good measure keeping him there because Ezra's really strong so he's like I'm gonna <laughs> and so Elias is standing there just to keep him there reaches down rips a chunk of wood off of the shelf and stabs Ezra directly in the heart blood splatters everywhere and Elias says one of the greatest things he says didn't I tell you I wouldn't miss Mm -hmm. And he, um, then Ezra just laughs and says, don't forget to cut off my head. And Elias says, oh, I won't. Which thereby, by the way, teaches us how to properly kill a sanguine. Yep. A stake in the heart and a cut of the head. And um, Elias grabs a kitchen knife and intends on doing just that. He fully intends on cutting off Ezra's head and ending it right there. But Lilith, oh, that. Lilith cries and pleads for Elias to stop. Why? So he does. He rationalizes it by thinking to himself, if I kill Ezra now, not only would it hurt Lilith, whom I do genuinely care about, but it would hurt Skylar too. No. 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 And that's my no. question. Do you really think Skylar would be hurt by that no. at this point? If, if he actually would sit there and go back to the book, he would see the walk of shame that she's feeling yeah. and go, okay, yeah, I can kill this bastard now. <laughs> Do you agree? Do you think that it actually would I, hurt her? No, it would hurt Lilith. Yes. But I think Lilith is biding her time because she found out what happened. Yeah. So she's probably going to just, you know, bide her time. Almost and then, like she's trying to figure out what to do. And she's going to exact her own little yeah. revenge on his ass. Okay. I think at first, 
she would be very it wouldn't hurt her at all talking about Skylar yes uh, it wouldn't hurt her at all wouldn't hurt her feelings that he's dead she would be grateful as time went on though she would be almost like she would resent him a little bit really maybe not resent him but be somewhat no like not, resent Elias for doing yeah, that yeah that's what yeah, I'm saying yeah that's what I mean and I don't I don't think that she would be remorseful but she would be she would feel some something for him but ultimately yeah she would be she good okay <laughs> good I'm glad good you good good I do it <laughs> okay Shh. too bad you crushed that thing we could have kept it as a souvenir mm. <laughs> <laughs> that would be something she would say that would be ugh. yeah Elias releases Ezra to Lilith's care and she tries to nurse him as best she can. And then Elias walks over and grabs Ezra's diamond that they kind of all forgot about. It's clear to Elias, and he even says as much, that Lilith does not mean as much to Ezra as she used to, especially if Skye really is his lifeblood. Elias even threatens to destroy the diamond. And it's then revealed kind of the question we've had. Mm -hmm. It's revealed that the destruction of a precious gem would separate the soul it protects from its true home. Moreover, Elias mentions a little thing called the mortality rule. It's not exactly explained what that means, but it's something important enough that he says it to Lilith and she takes, she's kind of like, oh wait, hold on a second. So they all kind of pause at that. What do you think the mortality rule is? Once the, the diamond or the precious stone is destroyed, mm -hmm. their time is accelerated. Almost like they they don't have yeah. much longer yeah, to live. Yeah, basically they, they're almost on pause. Okay. And even though their hair grows, you know, they can shave, they might look a little bit older, but they've slowed down yeah. over the centuries. You destroy that gem, all that time basically put gets put into fast forward and time catches up with you. Okay. Almost like the death scene out of Last Crusade when the dude... I was thinking exactly yeah. that. I was thinking exactly that. I'm like, oh, kind of like in Last Crusade yeah. when the guy and he kind of like tilts his head and... And then everything. just literally yeah. turns yeah. to dust. I was yeah. thinking that. I was also thinking Lord of the Rings, maybe it means they have a mortal life now. Ooh. That, that could be. Hmm... Well, Elias. <laughs> <laughs> well, way to give it away there. All right. All right. All right. Here we go. Yeah. Well, Elias. <laughs> so, you are, I mean, I know you say you're like, I don't think I have a lot to contribute, but your contributions have been greater than you know. <laughs> Well, they you. really have because uh, I'll tell I'm, you what I'm being the strong some of these I some of these things bit. you are really on like I said, I'm it's like Superman side. takes the cart and kind of gets it on the track but it's still wobbly and you're like here let me fix it and we're like oh hold on a second where did <laughs> that come from so Elias does give in to Lilith and gives her the diamond as was intended by Ezra. Shh. He reminds Ezra, didn't I say to be careful who you give that diamond to? It's such a shame that you have a bad habit of not listening to my advice. You should consider taking on a different habit. Meanwhile, Elias decides letting Lilith take care of Ezra is actually going to be more beneficial than he thought. How so? How do you think Lilith's involvement in this helps Elias because it hasn't seemed to help so far. Oh, because it keeps her it keeps her focused on Azra and also Azra can't be fooling around with uh Sky. So it, she's the one keeping him yeah. in check. Yeah, in a way. Okay. Well I agree. Or trying. We'll yeah. say trying. Yeah. So then we move on to chapter thirty six. 
Skylar just background leading up to this moment because this is another one of those chapters where Elias is in it but for like a second so you need to know what led to him being in it Skylar discovers Ava's dead body in Alchemic Falls and between being Sanguise food the night before and now seeing her cousin's dead body from what looks like the worst gash in history because it's like open right here on her shoulder she is absolutely just breaking down Skylar is yeah. so what does she do she goes home at Derek's behest and she calls Elias he genuinely kind of appears surprised that she's like, calling him. Really? That's, the, that's kind of his thinking. It's like, we haven't spoken in two weeks. I'm really surprised she's calling. But his very first question, whenever he hears her voice, he says, are you okay? When Skye starts to apologize and rattle off a list of everything that's going <laughs> wrong, because she really does. She's like, Elias, I don't know what to do, because she's breaking. Elias just cuts her short and says, where are you? Are you safe? Learning that she's at home alone, he instantly just says, I'm on my way and hangs up. Do you think that when he gets to her place, do you think he'll tell her what he did to Ezra? Oh, hell no. Mm -mm. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. So we think he'll tell her eventually. Yeah. Do you think that Elias would have called Skylar today had no. she not called him first? No. No? Mm -mm. No, I think maybe after a day. Because okay. it's going to take Ezra a while oh, to yeah. come back. Oh, yeah. It really will. And uh, so he's going to be out of action. She's going to have to get her thoughts together because, you know, she's going to come clean about it. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah. So, uh, it would probably have been the next day that they would have communicated to each other. All the and or, and Yeah. Yeah, I screwed up. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I just want to let you know, I, I almost killed your, your whatever the hell that dude is. Yeah. Um, seriously, I, I, I was right there. Yeah. Well, why didn't you? Lilith. Yeah. Well, she's going to have a really interesting development. I'm excited to talk about her. Yeah. But the last time that we see Elias in this book is chapter 36. He goes downstairs to the Devil's Playground to confront Lilith about Ava's death because he did not know. She tries to deny having anything to do oh, with yeah. it. Of course, that's her M.O. But Elias finds that very hard to believe. So he takes this opportunity to throw his weight around a little bit and remind her of the consequences for breaking her end of the deal to not hurt Ava or Skylar. He pins her to the ground and serpents appear out of nowhere and just start wrapping around her to hold her there. And it really shows a new side to his power. Where did this power come from? He always had it. He just never used it. I, that's what I was thinking. It was almost like a hidden power. And okay. Like, oh, this is new. What do you think it means that he can summon the serpents out oh, of the he's ground got, like that? He's got dark arts in him. And the other thing is, and that and that's the beauty of these characters and stuff, is one, they're, in, they're remarkably intelligent, but remarkably stupid at the same time. Yeah. Because Lilith sit there and walks around thinking she's such hot shit that she can never do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. And... Not only has she hurt Sky, mm -hmm. she she had to kill Ava. Yeah, and even though it was a mercy kill, yeah, it she still put a kill. her she put Ava in that position. She did to get injured. She did, and yet she still would not accept responsibility. Oh, it's always mm -hmm. someone else's fault. Mm -hmm. And then he sits there and pulls up and shows what he's capable of, and. Of course, she's freaking out at this point. Yeah. And rightly so, because she's about a hiccup away from uh, not being able to breathe. So, he reaches down. Here's the next thing he does, because that's not torture enough. <laughs> Eli reaches down, and Lilith always wears this beautiful gold bracelet with a ruby sitting on it. 
and he reaches down while she's stuck and tangled in the serpents, pops that ruby right off that bracelet and says, bitch, I can destroy this right now. Give me one reason why I shouldn't. <laughs> and Lilith pleads with him just I mean her whole demeanor has changed and she's like please stop I will do whatever you want please just don't do that so instead of hurting her himself he comes up with a good plan I think it's a good plan he says you will if you're if you want to make this up to me you will confess what you've done to Skylar and you will gladly Accept whatever punishment Skylar deems fit, and you'll do it all without a fight. Why do you think Elias is deferring to Skylar for punishment instead of doing it himself as he previously indicated? Because he knows that Skylar will enjoy it, and Skylar needs to know. Yes, she does. She does. So, have her basically confess all the bullshit that was going on in book three mm -hmm. and in, in start of book four so that uh, Skylar can sit there and, and deem whatever revenge because really what happened the previous night was all basically a snowball effect of what uh, Lilith and Ava were doing. Yeah. When Lilith <laughs> agrees, because she kind of has no choice, um, she, he releases the serpents from her. She's able to kind of like wobbly stand up and she asks for her, she has the balls to ask for her gem back. And Elias says, no, I'm going to hold on to this. You'll have it back when Skylar's done with you. And of course, Lilith cries about it. But, and Elias maintains his intimidating composure, warning her never to forget that she could face so much worse for what she's done. She should be grateful that Elias has the ability to show a little mercy while he feels like it. And if she tries something like that again, he will feed her to the wolves. So we've seen a lot of Elias's temper in the last couple books. Really, and I love it. Really rounding him out as a 3D character. Yes. Do you think that that bodes poorly for Skylar? In other words, could Elias's good intentions to protect her actually be bringing her closer to his seemingly sinister side? No. I mean, his intentions are good, and you know, they always say, you know... The road to road, hell. Road is hell paid with good intentions. Yep. Uh, but in this case, I think... <clears throat> I think in this case, though, he's... He screwed up. He knows mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But he was also trying to get to the bottom of the mystery. Yeah. And he got part of the mystery solved. And then realized that it was all connected. And that's why he sent and Lilith to sit there basically confess to Sky. And I ooh, Sky's gonna really tee off. And that's gonna also basically build on itself. Yeah. Going forward because that's gonna create more animosity between Lilith and Sky. Yeah. Possibly, but again, I think he has good intentions. I don't think he really has any he doesn't have the he doesn't have the ability to sit there and see ha have enough foresight to see the big picture. He seems to kind of be stuck in the the small frame what's in front of him to about a medium frame. Which is really funny considering in book three when Skylar had her galaxy and he pulled her out of it to show her the bigger picture. It's funny that he can't do that for exactly. himself. So, but uh, then again, she can't see it either. Yeah. So that they, kind of they're, they're, they're shows both blind. that kind of shows how much they need each other to yes. be able to see this stuff. So, last question before we end this particular segment of Murmurs of Mur County: Who or what? Do you really think Elias is protecting Skylar from? I don't want to Herself. 
Oh. Okay. Ooh, Just think ooh, about ooh. it. Anytime, anytime she's like lost control, got overly emotional and stuff, she let loose. You yeah. know, whether it's a storm, an earthquake, lightning bolts, fire, whatever. And she doesn't really control it. It's it's kind of happens. Yes. Yeah. Well, the reason why he's trying to protect, obviously, so she's not turned into sanguine food. Right. But, right. Well, so much for that. <laughs> but uh, also, she so she's not turned into a weapon. Okay. Somebody can manipulate her and turn her into a weapon that could annihilate everything, as we've been saying since the beginning. Yeah. They could annihilate the entire county, yeah. if not the planet. What do you think? Uh, that's really good right there. It's better than what I was thinking. I was just thinking uh, another worldly creature, like maybe someone from the uh, heaven or hell realm. How interesting. But I, no, I that's possible, too. How interesting. I, I kind of like his answer more, though. Why would you think it'd be someone from another realm? Just... <laughs> With someone from the hell realm, I feel like they're like tempting her for some reason. Mm. And if it's someone from the heaven realm, it's possibly recruiting. Mm -hmm. Well, so the reason to that help. I'm the reason that I'm asking you is because if you recall when when we meet the when we're introduced to hell and we meet Bane and we see Samuel interact with him, Samuel says, I need your help with this mortal, and we find out that mortal is Skylar. Mm-hmm. So, what other forces could be at work here? Like, oh, there's a lot of forces. What's happening in these realms? To okay. make you... Uh, and what role uh, does Elias play in all that? I think he's a bro. I think he's a broker. I think he's a businessman broker that w that works deals between the realms. Okay. And that's how he's lasted so long. Yeah, oh, and since we're that. talking about book, and since we're already at book four, the fact Bane knows Ezra, uh huh, that tells you all you need to know that that all these characters in some uh, way, shape, or form know each other. And they so, may not know that they know, yeah. you think? Because mm -hmm. it, it is funny because Bane does make a disparaging remark about Ezra. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, he's still the same dumbass he was. Uh -huh. <laughs> How interesting. Well, I will tell you what I told him. That book five really brings to a, to a front what's been building since book four. And then it starts you on something new to go for a little while in yes, the series. Yes. So, we're very excited for book five. And so, Lord. be sure to, you'll actually, next month, because that does it for our Murmurs of Murr County discussion for this Woo. month. So, first of all, thank you both for such a great discussion about Elias. I knew it was gonna be good, but it was really good. So, thank you all for watching. We are gonna keep doing the Murmurs of Murr County series, but we're not gonna keep doing it you know back to back yeah. we're going to take a little break from it next month and we're going to start doing trailer breakdowns next month so we're going to do we've already done one for book one but we're going to break down the trailers for books two through five so oh, wow. in the next in the coming weeks if i haven't posted them already you're going to look for the trailers for four and five to be uploaded so that you can see them and that way we can review them so that's what we've got in store for you and then we'll pick back up with some murmurs of Murr County after that but for now be sure you subscribe like this video keep following us because these discussions are only going to get more entertaining and in-depth and interesting so we love you and we will see you next time catch up on the Angel of Death series today the first four entries are now available directly at Stevie Joe Author dot com.